What specific problem does the new method aim to solve in the context of autoregressive models and image generation? The new method aims to solve the problem of the necessity of coupling autoregressive models with vector quantized representations in the context of image generation. The method proposes using a diffusion procedure operating on continuous valued domains to model the per token probability distribution, eliminating the need for discrete valued tokenizers. By leveraging diffusion models to represent arbitrary distributions for each token, the approach allows autoregressive models to work with continuous valued tokens, improving generation quality and eliminating the limitations and complexities associated with vector quantized tokenizers. Additionally, the method unifies standard autoregressive models and masked generative models into a generalized autoregressive framework, enabling the prediction of multiple output tokens simultaneously in a randomized order while maintaining the autoregressive nature. This approach, combined with diffusion loss, enhances the speed, flexibility, and effectiveness of autoregressive image generation, opening up new possibilities for modeling the interdependence of tokens in image generation without the constraints of discrete representations. How does the proposed method work, and what is the role of diffusion loss in the autoregressive model for image generation? Illustrate step by step. The proposed method for image generation operates as a sequence model on a tokenized latent space using continuous valued tokenizers instead of vector quantized tokenizers. The key innovation lies in the integration of diffusion loss into the autoregressive model. Firstly, the autoregressive model predicts a conditioning vector Z karatai for each token based on previous tokens. This vector Z karatai is then used to model the probability distribution of the next token X karatai as PX karatai vert Z karatai. The diffusion loss is applied to this conditional probability distribution allowing for the modeling of arbitrary distributions. The gradient from the diffusion loss is backpropagated to update the parameters of the network, generating the conditioning vector Z karatai. The autoregressive model with diffusion loss can be further extended to masked autoregressive MAR models, where a random subset of tokens is predicted based on known predicted tokens. This is achieved by permuting the token sequence in a random order, and predicting multiple tokens simultaneously. The MAR model utilizes a temperature tau for sampling tokens, ensuring diversity in the generated samples. The diffusion process in the autoregressive model, guided by diffusion loss, allows for efficient and accurate generation of images without the need for vector quantized tokenizers. In summary, the autoregressive model with diffusion loss leverages a denoising diffusion procedure to model the per-token probability distribution on continuous valued domains. This approach eliminates the reliance on discrete valued tokenizers, improves generation quality, and offers a flexible and efficient way to generate images by predicting tokens sequentially while considering the interdependence of tokens through diffusion. What are the theoretical or practical benefits of using continuous valued tokenizers and diffusion loss in autoregressive models compared to vector quantized tokenizers? The theoretical and practical benefits of using continuous valued tokenizers and diffusion loss in autoregressive models compared to vector quantized tokenizers are significant. The continuous valued tokenizers eliminate the need for discrete valued tokenizers, which are challenging to train and often result in lower reconstruction quality. Continuous valued tokenizers allow autoregressive models to benefit from higher quality tokenizers, improving generation quality. Additionally, the diffusion loss enables autoregressive models to model arbitrary distributions for each token, offering flexibility and efficiency in distribution modeling. This approach eliminates the necessity of vector quantization and provides a faster speed of sequence models. The diffusion loss can be applied with different types of tokenizers, showcasing its versatility and adaptability in various scenarios. Furthermore, 
The use of continuous valued tokenizers and diffusion loss in autoregressive models allows for faster generation rates with the ability to generate images in less than zero. Three seconds per image while maintaining a strong FID score of less than two. Zero on ImageNet 256 by 256. Overall, the combination of continuous valued tokenizers and diffusion loss in autoregressive models offers improved generation quality, faster speed, flexibility in distribution modeling, and elimination of the limitations associated with vector quantized tokenizers. How is the diffusion sampler used in the proposed method during inference time, and what role does the temperature parameter play in the sampling process? During inference time in the proposed method, the diffusion sampler is used to draw samples from the distribution P X vert Z. The diffusion sampler follows a reverse diffusion procedure, where samples are generated iteratively starting from a random noise vector X underscore T, and moving towards the desired distribution P, X vert Z. The diffusion process involves multiple steps, but at inference, only a subset of these steps are used to generate samples efficiently. Specifically, the text mentions that using 100 diffusion steps at inference is sufficient to achieve a strong generation quality. The temperature parameter in the sampling process plays a crucial role in controlling the diversity and fidelity of the generated samples. The temperature parameter tau in the diffusion sampler is used to adjust the noise variance during sampling. By applying temperature sampling, the diversity of the generated samples can be controlled. The temperature parameter allows for fine-tuning the balance between exploration, diversity, and exploitation, fidelity, in the generated samples. The text highlights that the temperature tau is essential in the diffusion sampler, similar to its importance in cross-entropy-based models. Adjusting the temperature parameter influences the behavior of the diffusion sampler and ultimately impacts the quality and diversity of the generated samples. What results were achieved with the proposed method, specifically in terms of speed, FID scores, and generation quality on ImageNet 256 by 256 dataset? The proposed method achieved impressive results on the ImageNet 256 by 256 dataset. In terms of speed, the model was able to generate images at a rate of less than zero. Three seconds per image. This indicates a fast generation process. Regarding FID scores, the model achieved a strong FID of less than 2. Zero, with the best model approaching 1.55 FID. This demonstrates high quality image generation compared to other methods. Additionally, the generation quality was consistently improved by the diffusion loss, eliminating the need for vector quantized tokenizers and allowing for higher quality non-quantized tokenizers. The method showcased effectiveness, speed, and flexibility, advancing autoregressive image generation by modeling the interdependence of tokens through autoregression and the per-token distribution by diffusion. These results highlight the success and potential of the proposed approach in image generation tasks on the ImageNet 256 by 256 dataset. What are the limitations or drawbacks of the proposed method, especially in the context of scalability, complexity, and applicability in different domains? The proposed method in the paper has several limitations and drawbacks, especially in terms of scalability, complexity, and applicability in different domains. Firstly, the method relies on a denoising MLP for diffusion loss, which can introduce complexity and computational overhead, particularly as the width of the MLP increases. While increasing the width of the MLP can improve generation quality, it also adds to the model's complexity and may require more parameters. Additionally, the diffusion process used in the method involves training with a 1,000-step noise schedule, which may be computationally intensive and could limit scalability, especially when applied to larger datasets or more complex tasks. Moreover, the method's reliance on a temperature parameter for controlling sample diversity and fidelity, similar to cross-entropy-based approaches, 
may introduce an additional hyperparameter that needs to be carefully tuned for optimal performance. This could add to the complexity of training and fine-tuning the model, especially when considering different datasets or domains where the optimal temperature value may vary. Furthermore, while the proposed method shows promising results in image generation tasks, its applicability in different domains beyond image generation is not extensively explored in the paper. The method's effectiveness and efficiency in tasks such as natural language processing or other sequential data generation tasks remain to be fully investigated. Adapting the method to different domains may require significant modifications and experimentation to ensure its effectiveness and generalizability. In conclusion, while the proposed method offers advancements in autoregressive models for image generation, its limitations in terms of scalability, complexity, and generalizability to different domains should be carefully considered and addressed in future research to ensure its broader applicability and effectiveness across various tasks and datasets.